Hello everyone, welcome to this week's EKG. We're gonna start with a case of a 68 year old female who is out having lunch with her friends and had a sudden onset of dizziness, weakness, nausea, and then she had a syncopal episode that lasted for about 30 seconds. When she woke up, she felt profoundly weak, still a little dizzy, and had vomited. Um, and then 911 was called. So you arrive at the restaurant, you meet her, she's awake and talking to you. These are the vital signs that you get. She's got a heart rate of 80, reassuring. Blood pressure of 103 over 68, okay. Oxygen's 95, blood sugar, very important in this case, normal at 109. So not too much to go off of, but anytime we have a patient with syncope, we gotta wonder if it could potentially be cardiac in origin, so we get our 12 lead. Here's what our 12 lead looks like. I'll give you a second to look at it, see what you think, and come up with your own diagnosis, and then we'll go through it together. Okay, so just like same way every time, we're gonna start with the rate here. I'm gonna let the computer do the work. I see a rate of 79 is what the computer's saying. I'm gonna confer with my eyes. And here's where I see something just standing out, catching my attention, these big abnormal waves here. We're gonna talk about those a little bit later. But in general, um, let's find our one that lines up with a nice, big, thick red line here. And we'll count down since we're doing our rate. So we've got 300, 150, 100, 70, and then 60. So we're somewhere between 60, 70 for our next P wave. 70 is about right. Um, I would agree with the computer here uh, with a rate of 79. Next, we're looking for our rhythm. Two questions we ask here, is there a P wave before every QRS and is it regular or irregular? So if we start with our P waves, lead two is the best place to see these. So I see a P wave here, P wave here. And then as we march out, there's pretty much P waves everywhere except for, uh-oh, here's that weird beat again. We'll talk about that in a second. But before every normal looking QRS, I see a P wave. So we will say this is generally sinus rhythm, but I can't call it regular because it has these odd looking waves in between the regular ones. And so we'll call this irregular. It's a sinus rhythm. And the name for these big waves here that look abnormal is PVCs, preventricular contractions. And we'll talk about those a little bit later, but that's what we're seeing. So we've got an irregular rhythm, rate of 79, P waves before we QRS. We move to our axis, we're looking always at lead one and lead AVF to help us determine which direction our axis is. Lead one, the majority of the QRS vector is up. We've got our left thumb up, AVF. I would say looking at this here, it's generally I would call it up, um, but then we can look at our tiebreaker lead here, lead two again up so that helps us confirm we've got two thumbs up i'll call this a normal axis then moving to our intervals again we can rely on the computer here qrs of 80 that's less than 120 for the majority of our narrow complex narrow complex qrs's right these don't really count the computer is not counting them because those are clearly wide but in general the majority of this rhythm uh, narrow qrs and we're looking at our QTC 401, that's less than 450, uh, where we start to be concerned. 500 is when we're really concerned about uh, maybe uh, spontaneous arrhythmias. And especially in this case, our QTC is gonna be very important. When you see PVCs, we wanna make sure that this is normal. Um, so our intervals are reassuring here. This looks good. Moving on to our ST segments, again, uh, we'll be real methodical about this. I always start with the inferior leads, so 2, 3, and AVF, looking at the normal beats, seeing if there's any ST elevations or depressions in any of this territory here. Everything looks like it's pretty much at the baseline. I don't see any T wave inversions or anything like that, but it would suggest ischemia. Again, then moving from the inferior leads to the high lateral leads, one in AVL, no inverted T waves. I don't see any ST depressions or elevations here. Again, moving around the backside of the heart to the other lateral leads. Again, um, the baseline looks good, no inverted T waves. Moving to the septal leads here. Not a lot to go off with that big PVC here, but we do have some good um, beats here to look at and no ST elevation or depression. I would call these ST segments normal. 
So when we look at our final diagnosis for this 12 lead, we've got a normal sinus rhythm with a rate of 79. Our axis is normal, our intervals are normal, and there's no ischemic changes, but we do note that there's frequent PVCs. So what exactly is a PVC? We know that cells in the heart all have what we call automaticity. So when the pacemaker, the sinoatrial node, is broken, the heart's got a backup system to help itself beat when it's not getting messages from the sinoatrial node. It goes to the AV node, this has a backup system. Sinoatrial node beats between 60 and 100. Normal AV node is a little bit slower if it has to take over for a sinoatrial node that's not functioning. And then as those electrical conduction pathways go down to the right and to the left, it gets a little slower and a little wider as that conduction is a little less organized. And so what's happening in PVCs? It's not that the sinoatrial node is broken. It's not that the AV node is broken. It's just that you have a pretty overactive cell in those Purkinje fibers there and those electrical conduction pathways in the ventricles. And they're trying to take over. And every once in a while, they actually get the opportunity to take over. And so we're seeing these cells in the ventricles that have kind of gone rogue are generating their own beat at their own time. And they're very characteristic. And so things that you can look for when you're trying to define a PVC. Uh, it has a wide QRS and that's because it's coming from the ventricle. So usually any ventricular beat that's originating in the ventricles will be wide. Um, so that's what you see. It will be premature. And so if you look back at our previous 12 lead, you have a P wave QRST, P wave QRST, but then all of a sudden you're expecting a wider distance here and you're not getting that distance because this PVC jumps the gun. And so it's earlier, premature, uh, happens more quickly than you would anticipate with the regular rhythm that you have going on. And then the other thing you can look for is discordant, which means we've talked about this with left bundle branch block before, but your, your, your vectors are opposite of each other. So you have a Q wave here that's going down and then the T wave is going up. So they should never be in the same direction. There's always kind of an offset in, in, your, uh, in your vectors there. And usually after the PVC, there's a pause. And so if we go back to our 12 lead here and we try to characterize these PVCs, we see a PVC here a PVC here and one right here and if we go through them it's this is exactly what we see we see a very wide QRS it's greater than 120 milliseconds um, it happens you would expect it happens before your next anticipated beat right so it's premature it's wide there's no P wave and the morphology, it, it doesn't have any concordant changes. So it's part of the vector is up, part of the vector is down. That's good. Um, so that's how we define our PVCs. Things that can cause PVCs, lifestyle issues can cause them. So it's not an abnormal to feel palpitations. Maybe sometimes after you drink caffeine or use a stimulant drug or feeling anxious or stressful, this can all increase the excitability of some of those cells in the heart to take over and cause PVCs however, can be caused by medical problems. So low potassium, low magnesium, electrolyte abnormalities, sometimes even structural heart disease. And this is where it's really important to discern what's going on with your patient because a lot of times in otherwise young and healthy people, they're generally benign. They may feel their heart flutter or like it skips a beat. Um, usually not a problem. However, in people that have either a long QT, this is why it's really important when you see a patient that's got PVCs on their 12 lead, make sure you're looking at that QT because it would be easy if that if that beat happens too prematurely, you can get an RNT phenomenon and they can go into VTAC. So pay close attention to your QTC in these patients. The other thing is if they already have known heart disease. So if I've got a patient that's elderly, has had a heart attack before, smoker, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, all of those things, and now they're having a bunch of PVCs, we know that that indicates they may have increased mortality from their cardiac disease. So if it's an otherwise young, healthy person, probably okay. If it's a person Person who's got a lot of risk factors for cardiac disease, I would take these very seriously and can almost herald maybe some ischemic changes in their conduction pathways or other structural disease that we just don't know about. And our lady, she ended up being just fine. She was a little bit dehydrated. Her electrolytes were normal. She got to the hospital. They gave her some fluids. She felt better and ended up being okay. 
And uh, that is all for today. Thank you for joining us for PVCs, and I'll see you next week when we talk about something else.